Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to uh, another Clockwork Empires video. I put these out about once a month uh, when Gaslamp Games uh, publishes another version to the stable branch. So Clockwork Empires is a colony simulation game uh, being developed by Gaslamp Games. It's uh, available on Steam, it's currently in early access. We're up to version 39. That was released just a little bit earlier this week. Uh, there's a I say this every month. There's a bunch of new stuff, a bunch of cool new features. Uh, hopefully I can show you. I'm just going to get into starting a new game here. Uh, often when I do these, I set up my colony in the temperate uh, biome. There's flat grasslands and forests. Um, because that's easier. It's Basically, it's less of a hassle to get your colony up and running. Um, this time, I'm going with the new Sogwood colony. Set a course for adventure. Uh, I typically avoid the new Sogwood location because it's in the middle of a jungle and like there's a constant attacks from fishmen, which um, is relevant because uh, that's one of the. It's uh, a good way to spotlight some of the cool new stuff. So, another layer of uh, diplomacy was added, basically in version 38A, one of the sub-versions, uh, the experimental branch versions that directly preceded version 39 here. I'm just going to skip over the tutorial. Uh, oh, here, I'll just pause the game right here. Pa there we go. See this pink thing? Looks like a grub with teeth. It's actually pretty good. That's a death worm. That's uh, a new animal native to, specifically to the, jo oh my gosh, there's a lot of them. Uh, native to the jungle biome. It will ruthlessly hunt and attempt to eat your colonists. Um, so that's one thing. That actually has a pretty significant <laughs> impact on gameplay. First of all, because it will injure the hell out of your colonists. Uh, but also because... Oh my god, here's another one. Um, because uh, it can be butchered for meat. Yes, that's right. Another gross source of protein in the jungle. Oh, what the f... Yeah... Right, okay, I think we're okay. Yeah, we just had a bit of a death worm rush there. They remind me of the, uh... Zerg. You know, pff, Starcraft. Uh, wormy little bastards. Yeah, let's get that carpentry up and running. Um... What was I saying? Yes, death worms. So death worms will attack, essentially mindlessly. Uh, they will attempt to kill and eat your colonists, and they're very, very aggressive. Now, interestingly, um, they take the role of mindless attackers that fishmen used to have. That's right. Your colonists will no longer automatically fire upon fishmen, and fishmen are no longer automatically aggressive. And because a, a layer of diplomacy has been added. So, in the same way that it was possible to um, interact uh, a number of different ways with bandits, it's now possible, uh, those same interactions are possible with fishmen, i.e. Uh, peaceful coexistence, or uh, shoot, no, shoot them on sight, or uh, you know, caution. Uh, the, the one major distinction being that fishmen are, um, they don't share a language with you. So, if you, even if you tolerate their presence in town, um, they still don't necessarily, they're not necessarily your buddies. And in fact, they're kind of jerks. They like to, uh, crush your crops beneath their webby toes for fun. Or kick your, uh, kick your gabions and break your iron uh, sheets and things like that. They're kind of jerks. I am just going to uh, let the colony get on and do its thing. So, oh my goodness, more death worms? Well, I guess we won't be short of steak for a while. Let's follow the two hunters on their... Okay. 
Actually, while this is going on, I am going to uh, just pause the game for a sec. I'm going to enable hunting on my two military overseers. Since they always have guns, it's handy for them also to be able to hunt game for the colony. If I'd enabled hunting on any other colonist, uh, they would actually have to go get a firearm uh, to kill an animal for meat or possibly attempt to punch it to death, which is, as you might imagine, an inefficient way of gathering meat from things like giant beetles. Uh, so a whole bunch of stuff has been added since version 38, and I did cover that. I did cover some of that in my version 38A uh, one-off video. Um, but for those of you who did... Oh my goodness, another death arm. Uh, let's take a look at Cordelia's health. Oh my goodness, she's taken a lot of injuries. And that is a fa Okay. So, uh, one effect of the death... The introduction of death worms is that... Oh, my, my other soldier is also badly wounded. He's shaken, but we'll still fight. So, here's the thing. Uh, death worms do a lot of damage, even though they're... Uh, and they're, they're actually a little bit harder to kill than fishermen, but not quite as numerous. So, uh, in the temperate biome... Actually, in both biomes, you start with seven overseers, right? Each, each overseer oversees one crew here. Uh, NCOs are the professional military crew leaders, crew overseers. And in the temperate biome, you would start with six civilian crew uh, overseers and one military. In the jungle biome, you actually start with five and two. Um, which is convenient. Oh my goodness, so many death worms. So here's the thing. Um, I'm going to pause the game. There's just too many things to explain here. So first of all, this is the character pane. We're looking at Guy Floodgate and his memories and all of that. Uh, this is his position in the colony and his title and all, all of his, you know, the, his inborn traits. A new thing, more, a new thing that's been added here uh, is more information. So we now, we now, uh, at a glance, we can see his emotional state. He's angry. If he's happy or sad or whatever, it goes here. There's his morale, how he reacts to threats and his willingness to fight, and his sanity. Um, because going mad and uh, going on a cultist murder spree is a thing that can happen. What can ha as you take, as a given colonist takes damage from being in combat or whatever, um, these afflictions will stack up here. And if he gets enough of these, he gets a permanent affliction on this affliction line. And the more he is wounded, the less and less effective a fighter he will be. For instance, Guy Floodgate has been injured so often now, his morale is broken, and he will not be an effective fighter. Uh, let's take a look at uh, our other soldier, who's doing push-ups under a palm tree. Cordelia. Oh, she is even more wounded. She is also terrified and will not participate in combat. This may be a problem, because we are still suffering from the plague of death worms. Well, okay, let's let's hope we can get the colony set up under these adverse conditions. Uh, yeah, so a colonist's memories will affect their disposition, that is to say their sanity, their morale, and their emotional state. Things that, it can, that can affect their temperament and provide the memories are all of, all of the parts of daily living. The quality of their food, uh, the number of beds, uh, whether or not they did something they didn't want to do. Colonists can make friends with each other. They can uh, they can become enemies. A whole bunch of colonists uh, be uh, inter-behaviors. So colonists have new ways to interact with each other now. Uh, in the last version, colonists can now hug each other if they are friends. They can punch each other if they are enemies. Uh, in addition to the uh, stabbing each other and murdering each other, which has been in the game for quite a lot longer. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, over. Um, another thing that was added, which I covered a little bit in 38A, was uh, the ability to stack things in... S stacks. Okay, that was awkwardly phrased. 
to put objects in the stockpile in stacks. So identical objects can now be piled into a single, here we go, like this stack of planks. This is actually two planks, for instance. And um, I believe that planks can be stacked in quantities up to like five. Uh, we can see we've got, well, here's a stack of eight raw stakes, for instance. Um, and what that has meant is that initially you'll need a lot less surface area to store all the colony's stuff. And it makes it a little more efficient because colonists don't need to walk as far to store and gather stuff and bring them to whatever, like their job site. Uh, all very cool. Um, since actually both of my soldiers are... <sighs> since all of my soldiers, both of my soldiers are like shell-shocked, gibbering, useless... Uh, by their terrible experiences with the death worms, I'm actually going to retire their units so I can reclaim them as workers. And I've actually recruited these two folks uh, to be militia NCOs. Now they're not quite effect as effective as soldiers, as the professional soldiers, but in their current military state, they're better than nothing. And here we can see the newly appointed militia is running to the stockpile to grab a gun because that's what you do uh, and here we are at night number one so after our early run in with the terrifying death worm I'm just gonna continue setting up the colony here um, another thing a significant addition to 39 from 38 is uh, a tweak in the production level of pretty much everything so uh, prior to this edition, when you took one log and you uh, performed one work, uh, let's say one carpentry job on it, it would produce one plank. So production yields have been increased across the board. Now one log can be processed into, I think, two planks? I'm actually not sure of the exact number. It's, it's more than it was. Typically double or triple the previous yield. That applies also to kitchen goods, uh, depending on the input. So vegetable goods like wheat, um, it, it was time was you could process one ba one bag of wheat flour into one loaf of bread. Uh, that has been changed, so it now yields two loaves of bread. Now for meat products, that's actually tripled, uh, presumably because you know meat is meat is more nutritious, has more easily digestible protein. It's it, from a balance point of view, meat is harder to obtain than uh, grains or crops. So when you stick in, when your kitchen cooks one steak, it will now produce three cooked steak and, and so on. Uh, which raises the issue, uh, which is an interesting balance issue specifically for the jungle. Thanks to, uh, let's forge some coconuts here and chop down some timber. Thanks to the prevalence of marauding death worms, as well as all the native fauna of the jungle, so giant beetles, regular sized beetles, uh, jungle fowl, and if you choose to murder them, fishmen and maybe bandits and other sources of human flesh, uh, the jungle has lots of places to get meat, uh, which means uh, thanks to the triple yields, you can actually produce, uh, it's a lot easier to hunt for your food in the jungle than it is in the temperate biome, which means you don't need to set up as many farms, which means um, you don't need to devote as many workers to maintaining those farms. And thus you have more workers to uh, work at your workshops, etc., etc. The thing of it is, uh, meat may be more prevalent here, but it's, you know, obtaining meat is unpredictable. Um, so it presents an interesting dichotomy, right? And also the jungle in general is a more difficult place to survive. <laughs> anyway, so that's uh, enough of that. <laughs> so stuff can be stocked in stacks in the stockpile. Uh, production outputs have been doubled and tripled in many cases, which actually balances out the uh, resource gathering tweak uh, from earlier patches when the time to cut down a tree was like doubled, also doubled or tripled. Uh, basically, the means of production now is the most important part of the resource gathering chain, right? Now the ability to, oh, 
But hold that thought. Here we have an example. I've been talking so long, the autosave triggered. That's right. Uh, now the game autosaves every 10 minutes. This was a popular request, and uh, personally I think it's a good idea. Um, the state of the current autosave is that there are two rotating autosave files. So even if one of them fails to save and corrupts or whatever, uh, you still have the previous one to fall back on. So there will always be one most common autosave. That's on top of all the manual saves you might choose to make. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Hunger, uh, yes. There have been changes to the hunger system and the tiredness system. Basically those systems have become more detailed. Uh, people go through stages of being hunger, hungry now. They will accumulate memories of being hungry. And if they have enough of those memories, then they will become more and more willing to eat poor quality food, like raw ingredients and things like uncooked meat and stuff. Otherwise, they you know they prefer nicely cooked meals and uh, as as one would. Uh, similarly, the tiredness system. Uh, colonists will go through stages of being tired. So, so when they look for a bed and have nowhere to sleep. Uh, their tiredness will accumulate, and if they accumulate enough of those memories, well, first of all, they look for a bed, and if they can't find a bed, then they look for at least someplace indoors, so they can sleep indoors on the ground, and if they can't find one of those places, then they'll sleep outdoors on the ground. Uh, so they have a, there's a tiredness hierarchy of where they're willing to sleep, basically, and it makes them, you know, increasing amounts of grumpy. Uh, yeah, so that's Colonist's uh, AI has seen a bunch of more detail added. Uh, and there are generally a lot more sort of social, what I would call social jobs, in addition to just being idle and gossiping, which uh, is still quite popular, actually. Let's see. Guy Flickate, he was angry about something. He, uh, he made an enemy. Hattie Tyell. I, I can't find her. I don't know. So they don't like each other. He was also quite injured, presumably by the scourge of the deathworms earlier. Generally speaking, he's angry. Oh, that's right. He was one of my, uh, <laughs> he was one of my NCOs. Um, but he's a broken husk of a man and will no longer fight. But he is not insane. So, just going to continue building up the colony here. Uh, amusingly, in the latest patch notes, one of the lines reads, Fixed Minor Nerve Stapling Bug. Now, that's a reference to Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. Uh, nerve stapling was considered an atrocity that you could inflict on your own populace to basically reduce civilian unrest. Um, in context of Clockwork Empress, I'm not really sure what it means. I think it may have been something something in the uh, colonist AI scripting that was affecting, I don't know, their contentment in the... Uh, yeah, I, I don't really know what they meant. Um, but it's amusing. Uh, I'm hoping we... Well, we'll. I'm sure we'll eventually encounter some fishmen. And then I can show you the fishmen diplomacy features. Very, very cool. And there's some creepy, creepy stuff that can happen with fishmen. Like if you've decided not to make immediately make enemies with them, um, you have to put up with them being jerks. And they have their own goals, right? Like they'll just walk across the middle of town in a big, I'm going to call them a school of fishmen, a big gang. I don't know what they're doing. Why are they here? Uh, I, you, if, if it makes you uneasy, you can shoot at them, but then you risk war. And, you know... With bandits and death worms, uh, maybe you don't also want to make enemies of fishmen. And speaking of death worms, oh dear, why is Barston not? Uh... He's a serious affliction. He is terrified and flee. Uh, these death worms are doing a number on my colony. Now, one of the things we should consider is that. Soldiers are braver together. Even though they are terrified, they find comfort in numbers. 
I'm hoping by conscripting a bunch of soldiers, uh, the morale will be sufficient to at least fight back. Come on, guys. No, no one wants to shoot at the, the death worm. Oh, uh, yeah, that may have gone, uh, sorry, that was a little bit fast. Uh, what happened there was that I uh, was uh, had the opportunity to call in a favor from the Empire. I just, all the other options were grayed out, so I clicked the one I knew by sight, which is um, accepting three colonists, uh, three prisoners, three criminals, basically, as new colonists. Like the like what Britain used to do with Australia. I am going to assign you guys my two new colonists to the military as well. There we go. Uh, so as you can see, a standing military presence is very, very important to surviving the early days in New Sogwood. But your reward is tasty, tasty death worm steak. Ah, beautiful. One thing I should point out, um, one, um, another area of distinction amongst the militia here in the brown coats and the professional soldiers here in the red coats is that they have different reload times. There's actually a different anim reload animation for un basically unskilled shooters. It, it takes them longer. Um, but it's also got its own animation, which is pretty cool. Okay, um, I think I can return one of you to civilian life at least. Well, let's say you two. So, uh, because it's necessary to support a larger military, I'm going to have more mouths to feed, but fewer workers compared to the temperate biome. Um, one of the trade-offs you have for living in the tropics, I guess. Yeah, um, and I've cut this one off here. This was actually one big long session that ran way too long. Uh, so I've actually split it into two sessions, I think. Yeah, that's Clockwork Empires, Revision 39. Uh, just pushed to the stable stream a little bit earlier this week. There's a bunch of new stuff I keep saying and actually I haven't shown you all of the stuff that I was hoping to show you this session um, so to be continued uh, these these monthly updates typically go on uh, four or five episodes anyway I hope you will join me for future episodes my name is Alfred uh, consider uh, looking into Clockwork Empires it's available on Steam in early access uh, it's good fun oh, have a good one <laughs>